Hi everybody. Today we're discussing The Cask of Amontillado by Edgar Allan Poe. Um, the date of publication of the story is 1846. And this first slide, I just have a few um, slides because I've divided the Cask of Amontillado lecture into two parts just because it's a complicated story. There are a lot of words that you probably needed to look up. Um, find the dictionary definition so that you understand what's going on. So I'm going to go over the plot summary and characters in this first slide. If I can get us to move. Okay, so normally I don't um, read out the summary. I won't do that often, but for this particular um, story, I thought it might be important to read the summary of the story. So first of all, we have two characters in the story, Montresor, who is the first person narrator, and Fortunato is a former friend of his. And Fortunato still believes that he's friends with Montresor, although they're not as close as they once were. So Montresor tells us, the audience, as the first person narrator, that he desires revenge against a former friend of his for something unspecified. So he says, um, basically Fortunato insulted him, and so he desired revenge. Later, we might think that um, he could be jealousy or Fortunato is mocking him for something, but we really don't know. He kills him for an insult is what happens and um, sort of what it boils down to. Both characters are members of the Italian elite upper class. However, Montresor has had a downturn in his fortune and he's lost his status, although he still owns and lives in a large mansion, which we know is the setting of the story. Montresor uses the scene of the carnival, as well as Fortunato's drunkenness and attitude toward Amontillado to lure Fortunato down into his home's catacombs. Amontillado is a rare type of wine, and a cask is a barrel. And the very first slide here has an example of what a cask of wine would look like. Catacombs, and there's a picture in another slideshow with catacombs in them, they're burial places, generally underground in someone's home or under a church often, filled with bones that are scattered and stacked everywhere. So it's only bones and they're scattered and stacked in unusual um, configurations and that's what catacombs are. So Fortunato is drunk. Montresor uses reverse psychology to continue to lure him down into the basement, into the catacombs. Fortunato has a terrible cough. Montresor tells him he could get someone else to check out the Amontillado, a person called Lucrece. Now, Lucrece is not a character in the story. He's just someone Montresor dangles as a ploy to keep leading Fortunato into the catacombs because Fortunato is so arrogant to believe that he knows better than Lucrece, and so he will continue. Montresor knows this, and so he uses that reverse psychology to lead him forward. Montresor ultimately leads Fortunato to a niche or a small hidden compartment in the catacombs that is just the size of a human being standing up. Montresor has already placed chains inside the niche, chains and handcuffs, and he thus chains up Fortunato, essentially burying him alive, handcuffed and chained together to that niche while he's standing. Fortunato will die of thirst and perhaps lack of air as Montresor builds up the wall around him. So after he chains him, he uses uh, trowel and mortar to build up the, the niche in the wall with bricks. Some say, finally, that the whole story is Montresor's current confession of the murder. We find out that at the end that he has gotten away with the crime essentially for 50 years. So 
the very ending where under, we understand that the story is told 50 years later. Okay, characteristics of the narrator. Now remember, the narrator is Montresor. It is a first person narrator. And so the narration slideshow talks about what a first person narrator is. And we'll talk at the end of this segment about his reliability. Um, Fortunato is calculated, not Fortunato, I'm sorry, Montresor. He has planned this murder. He's determined to um, have his revenge for a perceived insult on Fortunato. Why is he insulted? Perhaps because of the arrogance of Fortunato. Now think about um, Fortunato's name and we'll get into that in the next slide. Um, Montresor is psychologically adept. He's able to play Fortunato for a fool. And Fortunato is literally dressed up as a carnival jester, which is a type of fool, the carnival jester. And so the psychological insight into Montresor's character is something that Edgar Allan Poe is very good at. And he was one of the first American authors to actually delve into the human mind in the way that he did. Montresor lacks a conscience. He buries him standing up alive and leaves him to die. And he has calculated in a very determined, meticulous, methodical fashion how he is going to do so. Perhaps Montresor is even insane. Now, we would have to really um, think about the different, different definitions of insanity. Um, I wouldn't call him bipolar or schizophrenic or on the autism spectrum, certainly. But if we want to say that there's a level of insanity that causes someone to kill someone else, um, it's not a crime of passion. It's not something that occurred spontaneously. He did it in the most um, meticulous way, as I said before, and also burying someone alive is one of the worst types of deaths because you're slowly gonna run out of air or die of thirst. One of those will happen first. And then finally, is he a reliable or an unreliable narrator? Remember my slide on narration talks about the reliability of a first person narrator. Remember he tells it from his perspective. And does he lie? Is he hypocritical? Can we trust him? Is there anything in the story that leads us to believe he might not be telling the truth? Possibly. Um, I would think that just killing someone based on an insult is a little bit insane and therefore would suggest that he's unreliable. Um, perhaps the confession at the end is a sense of his unreliability because how can he remember every single detail 50 years later? If he was a young man, say in his 20s or 30s, he's now in his late 70s or 80s. And so that gives us pause a little bit. Um, he's certainly a liar. He's lying to Fortunato. So is he also lying to us? We could potentially say that he's reliable though. Um, why would we mistrust these details? Certainly someone in their 80s could still have a sharp mind, particularly with something regarding um, a horrible act that they had done and that they had planned for so many weeks or months even. And so there are different possibilities. I think the text leads us to either or both. Whichever way you go in thinking about his reliability though, Montresor's, you want to use textual evidence. So that way you are proving your point. You're making an argument. This is a question that really doesn't have a 100% truthful answer. There are many different ways we can view this text. And that's what we have to think about with the beauty of literature is it invites many different interpretations. Okay, and finally, the characteristics of Fortunato. He is foolish, we know that. That's what a jester hat looks like. And um, 
the jingling of the bells is mentioned several times in the story. Um, sometimes in a humorous capacity, another time in an ironic and sad capacity at the end as he's jingling the bells while Montresor is shouting at him through the, um, and echoing his screams through the wall. He's transparent. We can see his foolishness immediately. We know who he is. We know that he thinks best of himself. We know that perhaps he's insulted Montresor in the past because Montresor is not as wealthy as he had been. Let me find the segment in the text that tells us that. I'm sorry I didn't mark it. So just give me a minute here. Um, this is the, the page of the story is in the narration section. And so I think it's on page 82 or 83. So let me look for it for a minute here. It's actually on page 84, in the middle of page 84, um, where they're having a conversation. Montresor says, I drink, or Fortunato says, I drink to the buried that repose around us, and I to your long life. He again took my arm and we proceeded. These vaults, he said, are extensive. The Montresors, I replied, were a great and numerous family. He doesn't say our or are. He doesn't say are in the present tense, he says were. And then later um, on the same page, and I'm going to talk about this in the next slideshow, when he discusses the uh, conversation and has the conversation about the Masons. So the Masons are a brotherhood, a fraternal organization, and Fortunato thinks it's impossible that Montresor could be a member of the Masons. The Masons were an elite group they were rich, they were the wealthy, um, and mostly continue to be. The Masons are still an organization, um, a brotherhood of people. So with Montresor not being a member of the Masons, it's another insult, another jab at him that he doesn't have the wealth and prestige that he once did. He's a flat character, and that means that he doesn't change throughout the story. He's the same. He does not have the capacity to change as a character. Poe drew him as that. And then finally, he is arrogant. Is he truly an expert on Demontiato, or does he just think he is? So that's all for now.